Hi everybody, I'm Julia and this is Julia at Home. This year, with my preschooler and first grader, we actually started with a study of prehistory. I'm going to break our prehistory study into three different videos. In this video, I'm going to be talking about our resources and what we did for the Big Bang and evolution. I will have another video on dinosaurs because I have a lot of resources on dinosaurs. And then another one on prehistory and early man. So let's jump right into the Big Bang and Evolution. I found some great books for kids on this topic, so I am excited to show you. The first book I want to show you is Life Story by Virginia Lee Burton, and we used this for our whole prehistory study and actually even goes into um, a little bit at the end, more modern day and how the seasons go. Um, but it starts off with the Big Bang, and it, it says things in like, it's... Um, it breaks it down into acts and scenes as if you're watching a play. So it's like a play of what happened in the history of the earth here and life um, arriving and evolving. So that's, um, it's, it's a really great book. So we just read a couple pages each week as we went through. Um, you can see dinosaurs are included here as well. So you'll see this in the other videos I'll show you again, but Life Story by Virginia Lee Burton was a great resource to start with, and I kind of used it as a spine. Next, we have Story of Life Evolution, and this is the Welcome to the Museum series that I love. And this is actually, this is very cool. This is a fold-out. So you, I'm not gonna be able to get the whole thing on camera, but um, I we had this, I used this um, as a display, and um, I had it out on our unit study shelves. Okay, I think I wrangled it all back together. I had this out um, on our unit study shelves as a display. It does also have um, some, it, it has, content on the back as well that you can read. We didn't actually end up using this um, as far as reading it because I had other resources that I preferred, but it was wonderful to have out on our shelves and then we could use it to um, draw from and other things. So um, this is really fun. Then this book is called One Day a Dot. And I have a couple books that start with the Big Bang and go through evolution, but this one really, um, I, I, this one was the one I first started with because it, it really, really felt like it uh, was simple and it gives that idea of the Big Bang, which a lot of them focused more on evolution. So this is great for like younger kids. Like, so I have, I have a six year old, a four year old and a baby right now. Um, and so a lot of these books are geared towards that younger age group. Um, but I also always have resources that I think can be used for older as well because I'm, I'm learning along with. Um, but this is one of those books that re that's really great for a younger age group. Moving more strictly into evolution out of the Big Bang, um, Grandmother Fish is another really simple one for, uh, little, for younger kids. And, um, but my six-year-old also really enjoyed it. So it goes through um, from Grandmother Reptile Kind of, and then shows you cousins and how how we got from grandmother fish to grandmother human. I think is the last one, and it talks about what they did and how they evolved. So, yes, grandmother human is, I believe, the last one there, and at the end it shows you more of a chart and a tree. And it has more information, so um, explaining concepts of evolution to kids. I found this really helpful. I really enjoy this book, and if you have a little one especially, definitely get this one. Yet another one. I You can tell I couldn't help myself. We probably didn't need all three of these, but they were all good. And I think they all help round out the view of evolution. And um, this, I get my books used, so just ignore the... the all the stickers on it. This is, sorry, this is our family tree and evolution story. Yeah. This one doesn't start with the Big Bang, but it starts with life. So it starts a little bit earlier than Grandmother Fish, um, but it's, it's kind of like in between um, One Day a Dot and Grandmother Fish as far as when it starts. But I think it's just slightly older. It's got gorgeous pictures though. Gorgeous, gorgeous pictures. Yeah. 
And again, coming there. I just think it's it's beautifully done. I love this last this last image here. So that is our family tree and evolution story. Okay. I debated whether to get these two or not because I was just getting so many books for this unit and I am so glad I did. By far my favorite books we did during this unit. Um, and now I'm forgetting which order they come in, but there's when fish got feet, sharks got teeth and bugs began to swarm. And when bugs were big, plants were strange, tetrapods stopped the earth. This one is first. It gives you a timeline in the back here and shows you where you are. So this is about the Silurian and Devonian uh, periods, which were during the Paleozoic era. And then the next one um, is the Carboniferous and Permian periods. So this was fantastic because there's honestly not a lot of information, uh, especially that's accessible for children on that time in history or prehistory. Um, and I, I don't think I really ever learned about it. And so this was really fascinating. It's like, it's the time between, you know, the life first starting in the seas and, you know, the, um, all the sea creatures that evolved and then the dinosaurs, there's, there's stuff that happened in, the, in between that we don't normally talk about. Um, and these cover that and they do it in such a fun way. So there's, um, kind of cartoony pictures there's funny speech bubbles that go with a lot of it. So there's a lot of info packed in this book. Um, and we we actually flew through it though. It, it took some time, but we flew through it because we were all so interested in what was happening. So these are fantastic resources. They're National Geographic. And I want them to come up with ones for every single <laughs> period in prehistory. Um, moving on. This is when the whales walked and I got this just because it's gorgeous and it's a little bit more referency. We didn't read it through like a story, but we, we used it to look through and um, we used it when doing our timeline, which I will come back to in a minute. Um, but it just, it focuses on certain areas and certain things. So like this talks about birds evolving, um, whales, these are the modern whales appearing. So it, it, it's, um, it's, it goes through different types of animals, I guess. I don't think it goes through plants really. Um, and how, and different evolutionary changes and, um, yeah. So it'll do like a focus on reptiles, a focus on mammals, a focus on birds and such like that. So, but it is beautiful photos and it's definitely a great reference book if you want one. It's also great to use for like nature journaling or if you're doing timelines like we are and you want something to copy from, this is a great resource for that. Lastly, this is, this is, and this book is Charlotte's Bones. It's the beluga whale in the farmer's field. And I got this specifically because this is um, from the area that we're living in, in Vermont. They found this beluga whale. Now this is a little later then um, the time period from the blue gray is a little later than the other books on evolution I was talking about. Um, but it's fascinating partially because I don't know if it's true of exactly the land that we're on, but this area here, the Champlain Valley was the Champlain Sea um, a while ago. And so you can find fossils and everything in the farmlands. And that's exactly what happens. It tells us the story of Charlotte this beluga whale that got separated from her pod, which was a little, it was a little sad that you know, she had to die for this to happen. Um, but she, she lay undisturbed there when it, it turned into land for thousands of years. And, and then they find the bones in this farmer's field. And this guy, a naturalist, finds them and recognizes them and he ends up putting them together. And you can see Charlotte's bones now in um, UVM's natural history. They have like a little natural history museum, but that would be a fun field trip as well to pair with this book if you're in the area. This, it was a, it's really a well done book and I liked that it was connected to where we are. These next two books I found at our congregations used book sale and we used them more for just looking through. So this one is Prehistoric Animals and it, it has good information. It just, it was, it was repeating a lot of the information that I had in other books. So if you see it, it's not a bad purchase if you want to use this as opposed to something else, but 
Um, yeah, so my kids looked through this. And then this one's really fun. This is Encyclopedia Prehistorica Mega Beasts. And it has pop-ups of different things. And even like these little, if I can get one, there's like pop-ups within, it's just, it's so cool. My kids love looking through this book. Um, and luckily thus far, they've been pretty gentle with it. Um, I think once the baby is a toddler, I'll have to put it where she can't get to it because um, it could easily break. But that is such a cool resource if you can find it. Before I show you some of our activities and games, I want to talk a little bit about our timeline. We did a timeline of from the beginning of the earth, the creation of the earth through modern day with the eras and the periods. And I don't expect my kids to have memorized the eras and the periods, um, but I thought it would be nice to give us a view of how things evolved. Um, so we took turns drawing different things that we chose and tried to do, um, you know, spread them out and have things through different eras and periods. I did, um, did I do the Big Bang? The Big Bang was a hard concept to draw. How do you draw that? I don't know. Um, and, you know, I had my kids choose different areas that they wanted to do. So my son was really intrigued by the fact that the world was once covered in lava. So he <laughs> drew that. And then they had fun drawing different creatures. And I drew some plants. And then we got to dinosaurs. We did dinosaurs. So that was all added um, on just, I cut little tiny pieces of paper so that they would fit and then taped them onto the timeline where they belong and that was it was just on our wall throughout our study so you could come back and look at it any time it's now been replaced with our ancient history timeline but i did move it downstairs to our basement we have a long hallway so it's going to live there for a while and we can look at it whenever we want the timeline i think is a great resource and i think if you had older children you could use that and rely on it even more one resource i want to quickly mention and you'll see something from it later is Build Your Library has a prehistory unit. And I did purchase that and I used a coloring page or two from it and some ideas. I also got some of my book ideas from that. So I will link it below and you can check it out. I didn't use it as written because I almost never use a resource exactly as written, um, but it could be a great match for your family. So you can look into that. Included in that, she has a page, I believe, for each period where you your child could write or draw something from that period. So if you have older kids, I think that would be a really great thing to do. And at some point, I'm sure we'll come back to this. And so I will probably use that resource then when my kids are older um, and encourage them to delve more deeply into it and have each have their own little book of what happened. Kind of like the Charlotte Mason Book of Centuries, it could, it could kind of be added to the beginning of that in a way. So first, for the Big Bang, you can do things that involve space. Now, I didn't wanna make this like a whole space unit. We've done that, we did that actually a couple years ago when my daughter was in preschool, so we'll come back to space again, I'm sure. But I did pull up for them uh, this giant puzzle. My son just loves doing puzzles, and so that's just also a great way to entertain him, but it felt connected to me to the Big Bang. Additionally, uh, for the Big Bang, we did this art. This idea was borrowed from another YouTuber. I will link her below. Our Wild Way also has a great video on the resources she used for uh, Big Bang Evolution and Dinosaurs. So please check out her videos as well if you're looking into what to do. But we, we copied her idea of making these pictures with the, um, of the galaxies. Um, this is my daughter's, this is my son's, you can tell. There's a lot of pink, there's a lot of black. Those are their favorite colors. Um, they had a lot of fun splattering these. I made one as well. And um, they're just attached uh, to a little plastic thing so I could put them in their portfolios for right now. But that was a fun activity we did in connection with the Big Bang. On our unit study shelves, I had displayed these fossil cards. This is from the Fossil Nature Guide from Brave Grown Home, and I will have it linked below as well. And I, I had used these to kind of decorate. Um, but they also have, it's different fossils that you can find. It has information on that fossil on each card. Um, I, I think if I had, if my kids were older and, you know, confident readers, I would have them read it and maybe use it to nature journal. Um, but since they're not strong readers at this point, um, I just used it for display and looking at different, you know, it, they could look at it however, they, however much they wanted. 
As a fun activity, I also got this Mega Fossil Dig Kit. I just saved the box so I could show you. It comes with this little guide that tells you what some of the fossils may be inside. And I will insert video here. They had so much fun. It's a big block and I just got one for both kids to share. We were a little confused at first because the things on the top are not actually the fossils that you're finding. We were trying not to break them, which was nearly impossible. But they had a lot of fun digging. It was very messy. And this was our first time doing one of these digs, at least in the house. When we had done some of our rock stuff, we did it outside. So um, I would just advise to not do it right before you're gonna eat at the dining room table. So that's <laughs> a note for myself as well. But they had a lot of fun doing it and they did end up working together. I took out some extra tools because um, it didn't come with, if, with doubles in the kit. But some of the things we found, um, we saved, um, they didn't wash them off completely well, but we were able to identify a couple things in here and I'm not gonna remember what any of them are called now. Um, but next time I do this, what I'll probably do is have my daughter write out, or depending when we do it, have them both write out what they are and label them so that you're also practicing writing. I think with older kids, that's a great idea. Again, mine are so young, it was more for fun and we did talk about what we found, but we didn't, um, they did find a tooth, which was super cool. Um, but I didn't make them label. I didn't want to make it difficult. I wanted it to stay fun. So then those stayed out on our unit shelf as we continued our unit study. The last couple things I wanted to show you from this unit, I already mentioned the Build Your Library's Prehistory Unit. This is just a coloring page from that. I had um, one for each child. This is, happens to be my son's. <laughs> he made everything blue. Um, and I think it's nice just to have for younger kids, things like coloring pages that they can do while you're reading to them. Um, and mine often will work on it while I'm reading to them, but they really like being read to, and so they'll, they'll go really slowly because they're concentrating on what I'm saying. And then later, they often come back and color more, so I think that's great. Um, an activity that they suggested in Build Your Library that I had my daughter do um, was choose an animal, and she chose horses. She loves horses, and she's drew out the um, evolution of a horse and I wrote down for her, I had her write horse, but I, <laughs> I wrote down for her the different things she drew. So this could also be, if you know Brave Writer, this is kind of a jot it down project that you could do as well and incorporate in your writing and um, creative writing and all that. So that's something I had her do. And we used the Usborne Encyclopedia of World, World History for that. There's several pages of prehistory. Oh, I still have it marked in here. Um, in here. So that's just basically always out and available for our use during all of our history units. So I should mention that we, we do use that and it starts in prehistory and goes all the way through till, I mean, modern day, but, um, 2000 is, is essentially when it ends. So we'll need to supplement some things for between 2000 and now. Um, but that's, uh, a great resource for any history that you're going to do. Those are the resources I used for our study of the Big Bang and evolution. We did all these within the course of over two, about two weeks, um, several times a week or every morning doing some reading and several times a week doing some projects and extra reading. Uh, if you want to see our dinosaur unit and our early man unit, which will finish up prehistory unit overall, um, look for those videos coming up soon. If they've already been published, they will be linked below as well. I hope you enjoyed. If you have any questions, let me know. As always, hit that thumbs up button if you liked it and subscribe if you haven't already, and I will talk to you later.